Magandang araw po sa ating lahat na imbag ngal daw kanya tayo. Amin. Good day to every one of us. Now we will be solving problems in dual purpose synchronous motor. But for this video, we will be dealing with problem number one. Let's read the problem. An industrial plant has an average load of 900 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.6 lagging. A synchronous motor is to be installed to drive a DC generator and to raise the overall power factor to 0.92. If preliminary estimates indicate that the input to the synchronous motor will be 250 kilowatts, Calculate letter A, its KVA input rating, and letter B, the power factor at which it will operate. Let's review and understand the problem. The average load for the plant is 900 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.6 lagging. A synchronous motor is to be installed to drive a DC generator and at the same time to increase or raise the overall power factor to 0.92. This power factor is still lagging, but of course, the advantage is the power factor is raised from 0.6 to 0.92, and its effect is lesser apparent power is required for the whole system than when there is no installed synchronous motor. And also, this synchronous motor is used to drive a DC generator. This DC generator will be used for other loads of the industrial plant. The synchronous motor has an estimated input of 250 kilowatts. Although the power output of the DC generator driven by the synchronous motor is less than its input, but trying to imagine it is still delivering a lot of electrical power basing from this 250 kilowatts input. Anyway, we are asked to determine the KVA input rating of the synchronous motor and the power factor at which it will operate. We will be solving this problem using phasor diagrams. First, let's take a look at the original phasor diagram when the synchronous motor is not yet installed. The effective power consumed by the load is 900 kilowatts. To solve for the initial KVA load or apparent power of the system, from the formula of the power factor, which is the ratio between the real power or the effective power and the apparent power, cross-multiply both the power factor and the apparent power to both sides, we have apparent power equals real power divided by the power factor. Substitute the values. We have 900 kilowatts divided this by 0 0.6. The initial KVA load is 1,500 kVA. Let's also determine the power factor angle of this load. From the formula, power factor angle equals the inverse cosine of the power factor. The inverse cosine of 0 0.6, this is 53.13 degrees. Now let's take a look at the final phasor diagram when the synchronous motor is being installed. The effective powers consumed by the load and the synchronous motor are in phase at an angle of zero. The power factor is raised to 0 0.92. The power factor angle at this condition is the inverse cosine of 0 0.92. This is 23.074 degrees. Again, we could use this formula to determine the apparent power. Cross-multiply the power factor and the apparent power. We have the apparent power equals the real power or the effective power divided by the power factor. And the total or final effective power of the system is 900 kilowatts plus 250 kilowatts. This is 1,150 kilowatts. Substituting this value to determine its apparent power, we have 1,150 kilowatts divided this by 0 0.92. The answer is 1,250 kVA. So this is the phasor diagram when the synchronous motor is being installed. Comparing both conditions, the power factor has been improved and also the apparent power needed for the final condition is lower compared when the synchronous motor is not yet installed at the initial condition. 1,500 kVA minus 1,250 kVA, that is 250 kVA. The 250 kVA reduction in the apparent power is a considerable value. That's why in industries and other facilities, power factor correction is employed. Now let's proceed to solving for the kVA rating of the synchronous motor. Let's combine the two phasor diagrams of both conditions. This is the power triangle representing the first condition or the initial condition. This is the power triangle representing the final condition. And this is the power triangle representing the synchronous motor. 
The apparent power of the synchronous motor has a different direction because its power factor angle is positive. The power triangle represents the apparent power, the real power, and also the reactive power. Therefore, to determine the apparent power of this synchronous motor, using Pythagorean theorem, we have apparent power equals the square root of the sum of the square of the effective power and the square of the reactive power. To determine its power factor, that is simply power factor equals the effective power divided by the apparent power. We already have the effective power input to the synchronous motor, that is 250 kilowatts. Therefore, to determine the KVA input to the synchronous motor, we first need to determine its reactive power. To determine the reactive power input of the synchronous motor, we have the representations of the reactive powers in the different conditions. We have the initial reactive power and the final reactive power. Analyzing this phasor diagram, the initial reactive power equals the final reactive power plus the reactive power of the synchronous motor. To determine the reactive power input of the synchronous motor, transpose the final reactive power to the other side of the equation we have. Reactive power input of the synchronous motor equals the initial reactive power minus the final reactive power. To determine the initial and final reactive powers, from the power triangle, the relationship of the angle theta to the reactive and apparent powers, we have sine function. That is sine theta equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite side of the power triangle is the reactive power and its hypotenuse is the apparent power. To determine the reactive power, cross multiply apparent power to the other side of the equation. That is reactive power equals apparent power times sine theta. From this derived formula to solve for the reactive powers of the initial and final conditions, we have these formulas. But please don't memorize these formulas. Analyze and understand. To solve for the reactive power of the initial conditions, substitute the values. Initial reactive power equals 1,500 kVA times sine 53.13 degrees. Its value is 1,199.998 kVar. Or this could be rounded off to 1,200 kVar. Now to solve for the reactive power of the final condition, substitute the values. Final reactive power equals 1,250 kVA times sine 23.074. That is 489.899 kVar or this could be rounded off to 490 kVar. Now that we have the values for the initial and final reactive powers, we could substitute them to this equation to determine the reactive power input of the synchronous motor. 1,200 kVar minus 490 kVar, this is 710 kVar. This is the reactive power input of the synchronous motor. Since its effective power is already given, that is 250 kilowatts, we can now determine by using Pythagorean theorem its reactive power. Again, from this formula, substitute the values. The square root of 250 kilowatts squared plus 710 kVar squared, this is 752.728 kVA. So this is the kVA input of the synchronous motor. Now that we have this value, we can now determine its power factor. Power factor, again, that is the ratio between the effective power and the apparent power. Substitute the values. 250 kilowatts divided this by 752.728 kVA, this is equivalent to 0 0.332 leading. Again, the power factor of a synchronous motor is leading. Hopefully, we learned something today. We will be solving other problems in the next videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat, naimbag nga aldaw kanya tayo amin, good day to every one of us.